Hello guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel. I'm just going to talk about these flex pads tonight. I'm still, I'm down here chugging away, working away on the car still. Front end is kind of, kind of finished now, barring one final eyeball. Well, I've, got, I've just got to, I've got to get a move on, I've got to get a shifty on now. Front end of the car is done. Um, doors on the other side are cut. And now I'm trying to cut both these doors down here. Then once I've done that, I, once I've done that, I've just basically got to cut the roof, the rear quarter panels, the skirts, and then I've got the rear section. So I've still got quite a lot to do, basically. <laughs> I'm trying to break it down in my mind. Uh, I've got to do these catwalks as well, which is going to be fun. Um, anyway, the reason I'm shooting this video is to talk about these pads, these flex purple, purple polishing pads are absolutely super, superb what's the um how do you get your head around the flex pads um you know because you're just seeing these purple pads what are the flex pads all about well quite simply they have four colors they have their green coarsest pad they have their purple light cutting pad then they have their orange softer polishing pads and then after that they have a red you can see in that drawer there a red out and out very soft dual foam finishing pad that's it so you've got four different types of foam in terms of size with flex you've got the full 160 that will go on the um the 150 inch backing plate so the big berthas you have the, the 100 i think these are 150 that mount to the 125 mil plates down there the, the size that everyone uses then you have these kind of 80, roughly, I think they're roughly 80 pads that will mount up to a 75 mil plate. And then you have these 40 inch pads that will mount up to a 35 mil plate, something like that. Anyway, you get the rough idea of the sizes. So four grades, <clears throat> four grades, four sizes. What do I like about them, guys? Well, really, to cut a long story short, you can skip, not, you, you know, People are going to pull me up on everything I can say, but most often you can skip these green pads. You you won't need to use these green pads for cutting most paintworks. And I'm doing my cutting here with those purple pads on hard B and W paint. And yeah, it's not it's not easy, but it's not the pad is fine basically. It's never going to be that easy. Um, I wouldn't really need to go up to, to this unless I'm really trying to pressure into deeper sanding marks. But even then, it doesn't make that much difference. The claim to fame. I'm going to say one thing that I don't like about these flex pads is that the green ones, they've got these chopped, chopped grooves in the pad. And you see, it seems to promote a bit of distortion in the pad. You lose a bit of the strength of the pad when you slice them up into squares like this. You see that on the surface, the distortion. Um, how do I know that 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 that, um, that that distortion or whatever you want to call it is undesirable? Well, on the purple pad that Flex do, it doesn't have it doesn't have those cuts, and the surface of this pad is taken be much more used than this one, and it's just holding its shape much better and lasting longer. Now, in the Shell Concepts range, they're using an ident identical foam. You know, these foam, the shapes aren't the same, but the foam is identical. But the Shell Concepts have got the, got the grooves in the pads. Um, and I'm going to say something. Um, I don't want those cuts in any of these pads. I don't find them that useful. They'll, they'll say that they're there for cooling and stuff like that. Whatever they're there for, I would rather they were not there. Because um, I'm noticing with all the pads with the sh shuts in them, the pads are distorting on the surface more. Um, so what that cooling thing, I just don't need it. Um, either way though guys, a little shortcut is basically if you're looking for a combination of things to use. Really simple. To do cutting you can use these flex purple pads and they'll have a size that fits any machine. And to do polishing you can use that orange pads. If you're going to do one stage on hard paintwork, you would use the purple pads. If you want to do one stage, single stage on softer paintwork, you could use the orange pads. And that is all you need. 
um, if you're they they are flat faced pads and they will work on a dual action polisher but they also and force rotation but they also seem to work quite well on the rotary as well because they're thick if you lean on them a little bit the pad can take that up they're just a really nice pad and i have not seen a pad that i can hammer this hard without it starting to break down on the surface and start to crumble these pads can take an absolute belting beating hammering and they are not crumbling out which is really good now when i talked about them i said i wish these pads were like closer to like well this size here this is the one that you get through a lot of i wish these pads were closer to like fiver or something and um, they're, they're about 11 quid something like that um ideally i'd want them to be under 10 pounds but i am seeing i knew they were good pads but i didn't realize they were quite as good as i thought they were you know what i mean the more you use them the more you learn stuff and i have yet to see a foam pad that i can hit this hard and it not break down so very durable pads um in my opinion but if you've used them comment back um the nice thing about them is that they can take up the panel a little bit they're not overly coarse so you've got a bit of softness there but they're ideal for cutting guys just brilliant pads um so you should check those out it's a really really good recommendation i think i would if i'm looking to try and slim long and everything so i had less kind of pads i would quite happily move away from the hex logic pads and um you know i only use the hex logic really for the dual action and i have the dual action polisher because it's what everyone else is using so if i'm doing channels for of videos for how to polish a car and all that sort of stuff and i'm and i'm using a rotary polisher um and i i have to think i have to think of who's watching the video and if i do a video saying this is how you should polish a car you should use this this tool here you should use the flex purple pad and you should use koch chemi h8 and m3 well quite a lot of people watching can't even access those tools well, maybe the tool they can access but they might not be able to get their hands on the pads and they might not be able to get their hands on the abrasives if you're in america and stuff like that so straight away when i do a video of a how to you know how to polish a car the dual action polisher for example i have to make it as a very important thing i have to make it compatible with the people watching it so they can actually follow it um so sometimes a lot of people say to me well why aren't you recommending this product why aren't you using this one in there why are you using the chemical guys pads because everyone can get them guys and they're decent um but in this kind of video which i won't put on the main channel you know um given the choice these pads here are absolutely superb from flex been really useful for me today testing all this stuff out guys you should check out those purple pads they are absolutely smoking hot and um just go on and on they are the duracell of um foam polishing pads really nice um how am i doing with the car i'm doing okay um got lots of work to do i've got to get down on me on me aris here and um i've got to go around and just work on the edges of this door and just get those edges polished nicely with the right light and then do the main kind of sections um probably break that down into three three things probably the top bit i've already compounded it's in pretty good it's in pretty good nick and i'll show you i'll show you everything here because this is all the sort of real stuff there's some i'm showing you in here because i know there's a couple of deep scratches which i haven't fully removed where are they there look can you just see it there if i move around can you see it it's right on the light somewhere there's a little deep scratch i'm not even sure if you can see it there's a few little things like that um there's one over here that's quite a long one that one i need i want to take out it's all these little decisions about how far do you go and how because it all takes time and stuff like that and i realize now there's no right or wrong there's no right or wrong there's definitely no perfection as i've talked about for me for me i'm 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 conscious that i'm spending too long here and i'm not going to get perfection either way but i'm getting very good results but I think 
the more I put into this and the closer I chase the perfection, I'm going to become paranoid about the car and using it and driving it and stuff like that. And I don't want to do that. I've been driving this car for a year with swell marks in it and it hasn't really bothered me at all. I still enjoyed it. I've still enjoyed cleaning it. I've enjoyed, you know, putting protection products on it and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. The priority for me is I think I'm saying I need to get a shifty on, but I've been saying that for a while now. So that's why am I filming? Enough filming, guys. I'm going to crack on. Good to see you. I thought I'd do this quick video. It's really muggy and hot in here, and um, it's a bit tight on space in this garage. <laughs> so I don't know what you're doing tonight, but I'm sitting down in my garage again, again, polishing my car. Anyway, take care. See you soon. I